teaching today on the agape principle. To truly know love, one must know Jehovah God. You will never understand love until you know Jehovah God. The world without God does not know love. Our present entire universe, the portion of it without Jehovah God does not know love. I've lived in over 100 nations of the world and I can verify that statement from actual experience. The word agape appears in the Greek New Testament 250 times seeking to assist us in that we might know and understand love because love reveals God. One of the great texts in the Bible is 1 John 4 and 16. It says, And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. He had believed it and he had experienced it. We have known. He had experienced it. And then the next sentence should be set off to itself really. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. If you're in love, agape love, you are in God and God is in him. And so you are in God and God is in you when you come to know agape love. God is love. The Bible, which is the word of God, says that Jehovah is love, that his ingredients that make him what he is, is love. God has omnipotence, all power. He could not have created the heavens and earth without possessing omnipotence, unlimited power. God has omniscience or un limited knowledge, knowledge that knows no bounds and knows no limits. God possesses wealth, riches, goods which are immeasurable and cannot be counted. He paved the streets of heaven with pure transparent gold. The molecules lined up in a positive manner to where you could see through it rather than a negative manner which clouds it. God has jewels beyond calculation. He made heaven's gates of one jewel. Revelation 21, 21. And the 12 gates were 12 jewels. Every several gate was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. But the true essence of God is love, not the power which cannot be measured, or the knowledge that's immeasurable. Those are qualities of God, but not his essence. If man could precisely and adequately describe love, then he could describe God. But until he understands absolutely, completely, totally what God is, who God is, he will not know love because God is love. Your point number two. The agape of God, the word agape is a Greek word for love. The agape of God directed toward 
the human race, not directed toward the stars, are the satellites in the heavens. In the Gospel of John, the Apostle, chapter 3 and verse 16, God, Jehovah God, loved planet Earth, the world. He gave his only Son begotten of himself that whosoever, not blue eyes, brown eyes, black eyes, but whosoever believeth, that word believeth is a very penetrating and deep word that relates to change. That you believe so much you become something else. Believeth in him should not perish, no dying. Shall never perish, but possess everlasting life. This is agape of heaven directed to human persons like you and me. In the Greek, the word world has many connotations. It can mean a world system. It can mean a geographical world. But here the word thalassa, people world. God didn't love mountains. God didn't love situ systems and situations of our present world. God loves people like you. You are the object of his love. In Romans 5 and 8 it says, God commendeth presenteth, reaches out his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, another word for that is rebellious, that while we were yet a rebel against him, Christ died for us. He is trying to show you the essence of God, that while you hate him, he gives his son as a sacrifice to pay your debts of sin so that you can be saved. Trying to get us to understand, if possible, what love truly is. Nothing on planet Earth or in your experiences can reveal to you what we're talking about. Only the Word of God can teach us the absoluteness of what love is all about. So if we don't go into the Word, we never understand the majesty of the Word, agape, love. In John 14, 21, it says, And he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, you have them? We have them today. We hold them in our hand, the Word of God. And if we keep them, he it is that loveth me. Seeing that there was no positive definition for love, he said, then I'll illustrate it. That if I say, do this, and you do it, that is the essence of love flowing out of you. That gets us to understand some love. When we do things that please others, it reveals an attitude toward them. They don't have to beg us to do it. Most of the time, not even ask us to do it. We do it. And that is because there's a, a relationship flowing from us to them. And he says, if you love me, huh, you will keep my commandments. And my commandments are not grievous. That's the devil talking. As I've told you before, I had a man to walk up to me and say, nobody can keep the Ten Commandments. Nobody's ever kept them. Well, I said, uh, which one is so hard? The first one, thou shalt have no other God before me. Is that hard? No. Well, the second one, don't make an image. Is that hard? No. Well, I said, uh, 
love your father and mother. Is that hard? No. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Wh which one is so hard? He said, I don't know. I said, I, you look like it too. <laughs> you can pick up a bunch of dirty words, flout them around, think you're smart, and it just shows how dull you are. Better think things through for yourself. God is love. Start at that point, learning and understanding and comprehending. And let's find out about God. Don't look at your neighbor and say, well, I looked at my neighbor and that didn't, well, your neighbor nothing. Looking at neighbors will take you to hell. You won't look to the Word of God. Our principle of truth are embedded in the Word of God. It is divine revelation. God put it there that we might understand the way to God and to know God. So we know the, we know the God of the universe by looking at his book called the Bible. And if you don't ever open that book, then you won't ever know God. You'll only be a hearsay person. I heard, but what you heard may not be true. What you read from the word is true. So he said, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. We know who loves God, the person that loves to keep his commandments. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. So you got them both here. And I will love him and will manifest myself. I will manifest myself to him. The agape love of God directed toward the human race. Your point number three, the effects of this agape, this divine love that we're talking about. Man has discovered that love in its fullest measure is unfathomable. The head has no bottom to it. You don't run out. However, man can observe the effects of love. You may not know what lightning is, but man, you can sure get your attention. Especially if you're on a plane, they start getting too close to you. We can observe the effects of love and acquaint himself with the world's greatest and most powerful force. Man has discovered that love in its fullest measure is unfathomable, immeasurable, there's so much of it. But, but that doesn't mean you can't be part of it. It means you can be part of it. It's for you. God can take hate out of our hearts misunderstanding out of our hearts and kick the devil out of our hearts that we can be full of love and the devil's a liar you can be full of love we live in a world of hate because it's full of the devil I'm going to a world full of love because it's full of God where are you headed for you see That's right. In order, to have in order to have love, there must be an object to pour it upon. Now, you hold on, under, underline that little uh, line there, underscore it with your pencil, or pen. You just can't love a totem pole. It may look like a man, but it's not. You know? There's no response there. You can kiss, but it can't kiss back. You see. In order to have love, there must be an object to pour it upon. God created man because God is love, and he had to. Someone had to respond to what he was. He is love, and he needed a response. And you and I are not creatures that evolved from nothing. We're creatures of response. God is love. Love is a manufacturer. Love is a creator. Love is a begetter. Love is not love that doesn't produce. And you are the effects of love made in the image and likeness of God image and likeness of God. 
This love, this makes love a creator. The creative processes of God is a demonstration of his divine essence, which we know and understand as love. The effects of agape. Number four, the agape principle in creation. The first chapters of Genesis are love in action. That's what they are, love in action. God created the constellations, the galaxies of the heavens without number. An astronomer in Chicago told me that with the latest telescopes, he is sure that there are more stars in the heavens than there are grains of sand by all the seashores of the world. Brother, that's pure confusion. That what looks like a grain out there and a little star, you put a 300 inch telescope on it and my God, it becomes a million. And as you look at it, just over the top of it, there's another million right behind it. And you wish you'd have stayed in bed. That's what a mighty God is, you see. The first chapters of Genesis are love chapters. Love created these sidereal majesties. God rejoiced in his creative ability as he listened to the morning stars as they sang together. God beheld his belching sons spewing forth fire and mighty flames in the universe. But as God walked down the Milky Way, the stars could not return his love and love desires above all to be loved. Gold and silver and gems do not take the place of love. You can have a bathtub full of gold and gems and be the most miserable wretch anywhere around. Love is only satisfied with love. Therefore, the creative forces of divinity move from the resplendent universe of immeasurable space and focus themselves upon a little planet and God made the earth. Here, in loving kindness, Jehovah pulled the mountains upward, making strength. He pushed the valleys downward and made luxuriant flora, flowers. He leveled out the plains like a mighty table. He planted his gold, his diamonds, and his oil in the secret hiding places of the earth, playing games. That's love. He just knew you were going to get that car you've got now. So he put the oil in there and says, here's my love. I'll bring it to you. You see, God gives the rain free of charge. It's a city here that pays you when they pipe it to you. But God gave it free. God makes no charge for his oil. It's these companies that put it in the filling station that do all the charging. How I many already knew that? God commanded the sea to come thus far and no further. That's in the Bible. And to make its bounds there. God created the denizens of the deep forest and the birds with gaudy plumage to fly from tree to tree. He created those. God smelled the fragrance of the flowers and listened to the singing of the birds. He beheld the crested peaks of the mountains, but none of these could return his love. And love must be loved or it ceases to be love. The divine thirst for love caused the great creator to make a creature after his own image, you and me. With the deft hands of destiny, he molded a lovely creature. There he lay upon the ground. This was the only time that God ever used his hands in creation. Someone said they'd been dirty ever since, working with you and me. Goliath, agape love had spoken the galaxies of the heavens into their orbits and spoken light and darkness into their existence. But with man, God used his own fingers God was pleased when he beheld his work, you and me. Then God breathed upon Adam, the Bible says, and God's spirit came inside of him. 
His blood began to flow and his heart began to beat. Adam opened one eye and the first one he saw was his creator. What a sight. A smile came to Adam's lips as he awoke on the dawn of his creation and beheld the true essence of love. Our God, he saw him. When God beheld the twinkle in Adam's eyes, the smile upon his lips, and the heart throb of God came into being, his soul was made happy. God's creative expression had reached its apex, never went above it until this moment. We're the apex, we're the top of all of God's creation. His crowning glory, Jehovah had a creation who could return his love. Say, I love you, Jesus. Say, I love you, God. That's what he likes. So God was so contented with his creature that he rested upon his creative processes on the seventh day. He got so happy, just laid down and quit and rested. He and Adam walked together and communed together in the luxuriant, glorious garden of God called Eden. They held hands and walked down the paths of the garden. That's love. The God who had made all things found the nearest expression of his personality in his creation that he called Adam and which you and I are a part of. Divine love realized that Adam needed a helpmate, that his love being God was not sufficient to Adam, who was a little creature that he had made, that he couldn't get that intimate with his creation. That Adam needed a helpmate of his own blood in his own likeness, in his own kin. Thus God, as the first surgeon in the universe, brought forth from Adam's side a creature that he called Eve. He placed her alongside Adam for him to love her and for her to love him. And that was the first love ever known on planet Earth among creatures of like nature created ones by God. But those two must never put God behind them. They are to both to love God with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their soul. Can you say amen? And both of them are to express the love of God between themselves and pouring out in front of them. They must love the Jehovah personally himself. Your greatest duty upon this planet Earth is to love God. Not to make automobiles. If you don't believe that will cease, go look at some buildings in town. It ceased. See the glass windows knocked out where they used to make beautiful automobiles. Listen to the silence of nothing. There's nobody there anymore. Things of this earth perish. Love lives forever. Forever. There's no end to it. In the Garden of Eden, in a celestial bliss, God and the first man and first woman dwelt in unity and supreme happiness. For how long? We don't know. They didn't measure time in those days. No time was measured, so we don't know. One day, God was keeping one of his regular appointments with Adam for a time of communion and fellowship there in the Garden of Eden. It was a great delight to the heart of God to walk through the garden and to see the able manner in which Adam cared for it and the love that, that he showed for all of the subordinate creatures in the Garden of Paradise. But Adam had a love for these creatures because God had made them they were the aspects of his love, and he understood them. Above all, God enjoyed the love in the heart of Adam. 
more than he did everything else on this earth. Adam loved God with an intelligent love. He knew he had made him. He knew that. And he loved God. And God loved him. And Adam, with his own nature, reached out to care and to love Jehovah God that had made him.